Welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to solve one-step equations with decimals and fractions. Let's take the first equation on the screen. x plus 1 equals 3.8. So our task is going to be to solve for x, meaning we're going to figure out what the value of x is. x is what we call the variable. And a variable is a letter that stands in for some unknown number. So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation over here. This will give us some room to do our work. x plus 1 equals 3.8. So in order to solve for the variable x in this case, we need to get that x all by itself. So we need to clear out anything else that's on that same side of the equation. So on this left side of the equation, we have x plus 1. So what we want to do to get rid of the plus 1 is subtract 1. And in order to keep an equation balanced, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So on this side, we're also going to subtract 1. Now a very common error would be to put the 1 right here. But the 1 is a whole number. It needs to go in the whole number place. So what I'm going to do is just add a decimal and a zero. That way everything is lined up. I've got my decimals lined up, my tenths place is lined up, my whole number place is lined up, and now I can subtract. So x plus 1 minus 1 is simply x. Bring down that equal sign. x equals 8 minus 0 is 8. Bring down our decimal. 3 minus 1 is 2. So my answer is 2.8. Now we can always check our work by taking our answer and putting it back into the original equation. So 2.8 plus 1 equals 3.8. Now I'm going to just bring down the equal sign, bring down the 3.8, and I want to do the addition over here and make sure that it actually does equal 3.8. So 2.8 plus 1, I can do that one mentally. It is, in fact, 3.8. So everything balances out. 3.8 equals 3.8. So I can put a little check mark to say it checked out. And now remember that answer was the 2.8. That's what the variable equals. So let's go back and put 2.8 in as our answer. There we go. Okay, x plus 0.1 equals 4.9. So first step again is to rewrite the equation. x plus 0 0.1 equals 4.9. Now I want to get that x alone so I'm going to subtract 0 0.1 and I would always do the same thing to both sides of my equation. Subtract 0 0.1 here. I'm left with just x Bring down my equal sign. 9 minus 1 is 8. Bring down my decimal. 4 minus 0 is 4. So it's 4.8. And I'm just going to do a quick mental check on this one instead of writing it back over here like I did on the last. So if I go up here and mentally put in 4.8, 4.8 plus 0.1. Well, 0.8 plus 0.1 is in fact 0.9. So I can see that I've done the work correctly. 4.8 should in fact be our answer. Let's go ahead and put it in. And it is. Now this is a division problem. x divided by 2 equals 3. So what we're asking ourselves is what divided by 2 equals 3. You actually may be able to do this problem in your head, but let's go ahead and set it up. Now the way we like to sh show division problems are as a fraction x divided by 2 is equal to 3. So if I have x divided by 2, how would I get back to just having the x alone? Well, what is the opposite of divided by 2? It is times 2. So I'm going to multiply 
this fraction by 2. I'm going to make it 2 over 1. So if I were to multiply these, these actually cancel out and become 1 and 1. So this becomes 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. x over 1 is x. So all we have to do if we are dividing a variable by some number is to multiply by that denominator and everything cancels out except for the variable. Now we have to go over here and do the same thing. Now since this is just in whole number form, I'm just going to multiply it by 2 instead of 2 over 1 and that is 6. Now chances are you knew that right off the bat. You are probably able to say, oh, 6 divided by 2 would equal 3. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you the proper setup and the proper way to do that problem. We do that with the easy problems because as our problems get more challenging down the road, then we know the basic procedure for how to solve an equation. Okay, 1 half plus x equals 1 and a half. So let's write this out. 1 half plus x equals 1 and 1 half. Now we want to get that x alone. So I have 1 half plus x. If I take 1 half away, 1 half minus 1 half is just 0. So that would be 0 plus x, which is the same thing as x. Now remember, we always do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So 1 and 1 half minus 1 half. So 1 half minus 1 half is 0. And that leaves me with the whole number 1. OK, x divided by 1 and 1 seventh equals 1 half. This is a little bit trickier than the last division problem. And let me show you why. x divided by 1 and 1 seventh equals 1 half. OK, so remember, to get x alone, if I've divided by 1 and 1 seventh, I am going to multiply by 1 and 1 seventh. And I can actually even put that over 1. Cross cancel there to simplify. 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. x over 1 is x. Now I'm going to multiply this by 1 and 1 seventh. However, we don't want to multiply a fraction by a mixed number. It is possible, but it's complicated. The general way that we deal with this is to turn this into an improper fraction. So we're going to actually put an extra step here. So 1, or 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So 8 sevenths is what 1 and 1 seventh would be as an improper fraction. Now I can go ahead and multiply. Now remember when we multiply fractions. We just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. The first thing we want to do though is look and see if we can simplify it all. So 1 and 7, that doesn't simplify, but ah, 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 8 four times. So x equals 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 7 is 7. 4 over 7. 4 over 7. Okay. So 4, and we're going to do it with a slash for 4 over 7. And that is the correct answer. All right. 23 divided by x equals 4.6. Okay, so this is a little bit different than what we've seen before. 23 divided by x equals 4.6. So in this case, we're dividing by the variable. So 
here's how we deal with that. I'm going to multiply by x over 1 and then multiply over here by x. Now I didn't do x over 1 because I'm dealing with a fraction, not a decimal, or excuse me, a decimal, not a fraction over here. Now, look what happens here. When I simplify, x goes into x one time, x goes into x one time, 1 times 23 is 23, 1 times 1 is 1, 23 over 1 is 23. I just got rid of the variable, but look what happened. The variable shows up over here, 4.6 times x is 4.6x. So what now I'm going to do is try to get the x alone, which is much easier to do because I can do 4.6 times x. Well, how would I undo 4.6 times x? I would divide by 4.6. I do the same thing to both sides of my equation. And we can simplify this. 4.6 goes into 4.6 once. 4.6 goes into 4.6 once. That leaves me with x over 1 or x equals, now I have to do this division, 23 times 4.6. Now, instead of doing the division right off the bat, let's see if we can estimate here. 23, 23 divided by 4. Well, let's see. If this were 20 and this were 4, 20 divided by 4 is 5. If this were 20 and this were 5, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So something between 4 and 5 might be reasonable. Um, if this were 24, 24 divided by 4 would be 6. But I'm not quite sure if that's right. I'm thinking it's 5 or 6. I think we need to go ahead and divide just to be sure. So let's do it. 23 divided by 4.6. Now remember when we divide by a decimal, so there's a decimal in our divisor, we move the decimal over 1. Whenever we do that, uh, in the divisor, we have to do the same to the dividend. So there's a decimal here at the end of 23. I'm going to move it over one place and add a zero. Extend my line. So the problem has now become 230 divided by 46. So let's see. If this were 50, 50 would go into 234 times, but it's going to go in there more than four times. I am going to guess five. I think five looks like it's going to work. Let's see. Yep, it sure does. So five is our answer on this one. Okay, solve for x. Ah, uh, this one is pretty easy. We can actually do this in our head. x divided by two is three. We can say to ourselves, what divided by 2 is 3? 6 divided by 2 is 3. x minus 1 is 8 ninths. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this one. So we'll rewrite the problem again. x minus 1 equals oops, let's get that equal sign, equals 8 Ninths. <clears throat> to get x alone, if we have x minus 1, by adding 1, x minus 1 plus 1, that just leaves us with that x. We'll bring down our equal sign. Remember, we need to do the same thing to both sides. 8 ninths plus 1 is 1, and 8 ninths. And I see that right here. Great job on this. Remember, always do the same things to both sides of your equation.